Hello YouTube, Shadow Hero 90 here, and welcome to my show, Sexism in Movies and TV. You see, there is a reason why I do this show. Now, despite the fact that a lot of the stuff I review is for adults, a lot of the stuff I rip apart is aimed at kids. And truth be told, boys do not get good role models out of these shows. In fact, growing up on schlock like this actually runs the risk of your typical young man growing up with very low self-esteem and possibly coming to hate himself when he reaches adulthood. And that's why I do this show, to expose the hypocritical and unbelievable level of hatred thrown at both boys and men through both movies and TV, in the hopes of making a difference. In January of last year, I reviewed the episode of Super Sentai, Suddenly a Traitor, as the 23rd episode of Sexism in Movies and TV. And in this episode, I'm going to be reviewing another episode from the Super Sentai series and comparing it to that one. The episode in question is from Super Sentai Mega Ranger titled, Very Bad, We Will Die. And like in the last episode of Sexism in Movies and TV, I'm going to give a short little recap before I go into the comparison. This episode starts with the Mega Rangers as their secret identities eating teriyaki. When suddenly a moth monster flies around spreading poisonous powder. The Mega Rangers show up. Fight the moth monster and later that night the five members of mega ranger are called into their base they see these marks which are essentially proof that they've been infected with a poison that's gonna kill them. They try to find a cure even though their mentor is working on it. And with only six hours left, they decide to live their lives to the fullest, doing stuff that they've always wanted to do before they kick the bucket. Miho, aka Mega Pink, sees a wedding dress, and this brings up the fact she always wanted to get married, and decide, and well, Kenta, Mega Red is stuffing his face. He runs into a boy he knows who tells him about 
a new fighting game coming into the arcade and wanting to play this game with that boy allows him to come to the conclusion that he can't give up hope and has to keep fighting. The chief calls in and tells them that if they can chop off a piece of the moth's body, they can make a cure from it. Even though they said it would merely be a chance, after everything they witnessed, the inspiration for them to regain hope, they decided to take it. <clears throat> So anyways, they chop off a part of the moth monster's body and take it back to the chief and him and the lab boys will essentially make an antidote from uh, that part of the moth's body. The antidote is made. And the doctor gives them the antidote. Mothman here gets big. And then the Mega Rangers kill him with their giant robot. Recap adjourned. Okay, now I'm going to explain through a comparison why Very Bad We Will Die from Super Sentai Mega Ranger worked where suddenly a traitor from Super Sentai O-Ranger did not. Mega Rangers did this storyline by having it presented as a moral dilemma by putting everyone's life on the line and asking the question, should we go after the moth monster and try to save everyone? Or should we accept our fate and do everything we've always wanted to do? Letting millions die and taking the hedonistic way out. Well, O-Rangers just portrayed this as only having the three male heroes being the ones whose lives are on the line, cucking them by having them saved by the two girls, because they're girls, in a scenario where the bad guys where the main bad guy tells the villain of the episode don't let your guard down cause one of those bimbos will seduce you into giving them the antidote gets cucked by his wife and is then proven right in the end mega ranger essentially caused in Mega Rangers it was the doctor and the people who he works with who developed the antidote and I'm pretty sure they were the ones who took all the credit because they deserved it because they were the ones who developed the antidote. Well, on O-Rangers, essentially the chief moved the clock forward to motivate 
these two dumb bimbos because if he didn't, they wouldn't have been able to create a plan. The chief is the one who created the plan to motivate those two dumb bimbos. So, uh, technically, it may have been their plan, but it was his plan to motivate them, because if he didn't, they would have come up with nothing. So, you'd think he'd get at least half the credit, but no. These two essentially skip work, have to be motivated to come up with a plan through trickery, and get all of the reward while the chief doesn't get anything and it probably is in bad taste to have the members who save the day only be able to fight the bad guy because they, you know, skipped work. Well, on the other hand, if these guys ever skipped work, they'd get chewed out and be called lazy. I watch shows like this because they usually don't have such a goddamn leftist, pathetic, double standard. And if you want the truth, the episode of Mega Rangers that I compare this episode to is suddenly a traitor Done right!